On this episode of Mahjong Nosh and Such, I'm going to make jalapeno stuffed mushrooms. This seems to be a pretty simple recipe. Of course, we need button mushrooms, some kind of filling. We're going to use cream cheese and a little cheddar cheese. Actually, I have Monterey Jack here. You can use whatever kind of cheese you want. And then we have some garlic, jalapeno, and chives for garnish and then salt and pepper that's all the ingredients in here so, oh and then i forgot of course the naughty bit bacon i've heard it said that everything is good with bacon so i'm going to start with the bacon we're going to bake it in the oven because it's cleaner that way no grease on the stove. We're going to do it in the oven where it's all self-contained. So I'm going to get to the bacon first. I have my oven preheated at 400 degrees and we'll cook them for 20 to 30 minutes until they're super crispy. We'll cook off all that fat as much as possible anyway. So here we go. <laughs> this is really quite the dis disgusting part. I really don't like touching raw meat. I really, really don't. I do like to eat meat, but I think if I were all by myself, a single woman, no kids, no husband, I probably could easily be a vegetarian. But I have a husband and a teenage son in the house, and they both like meat. I actually tried to be a vegetarian for a while, and I had to cook two meals, or at least p plan my menu so that I had enough veggies on the menu for me and enough meat on the menu for my husband and son. It was really hard to do though. I tried it for probably two months and gave up. It was just too hard to do. But it was a good attempt. So now I know what it would be like if I decided to continue that lifestyle or go back to it. And I may one day, but right now it's just easier to eat meat with everybody else. All right, there's going to be too much bacon here. I like to try to keep it so that it's one layer so that it gets super crispy because we're gonna make, you know, bacon bits out of it, basically. All right, so now I need to wash up real quick. Here we go. Somebody can have this for breakfast. Okay, so here's the bacon. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in that oven. We'll check that after about 20 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to chop all of these up and then we'll get the cheese prepped. We just need about a cup of cheese and then of course a brick of this cream cheese here. And then we'll clean these. Hopefully by then we'll be able to get to that bacon. So here we go. No seeds. And I'm gonna to try to get that white off of there too. Nice and clean. 
Boy, this stuff is strong. I can feel it in my throat. Goodness. That is amazing. Nature is amazing. Seriously. <coughs> it's even making me cough. Okay. I think I got it all off of there pretty good. So, you know what? I just had a thought. I probably should be wearing gloves because I heard that this, the oils or whatever, the residue from this jalapeno will be on my hands. I think I'll just wash my hands super quick. So I also heard that don't touch your face after you've been cutting jalapeno. And I have no idea how long the jalapeno is going to be on my hands, but I think I'll Google it and see. Okay, so I'm going to switch knives and go to this one. And I'm just going to mince this super fine. I was going to Google how to properly dice or mince, what have you jalapeno but I forgot so I'm just gonna do it the best I know how and just slice it super thin and then turn it on this other way and slice it some more and then I'll run my knife through it to get super fine dices so there's one okay now we will turn it and dice this way now, super fine. Okay, now, oops, I forgot a few here. Okay. Now I'm going to scoop it all together and dice it super fine again. I kind of thought this would be a really pretty holiday snack. We'll see if the jalapeno will be visible though in the finished product. I'm not sure. All right, so I'm just going to scooch this to the side. Okay, there's a seed. I don't want that. All right, now I think I'm going to wash my hands again and clean these knives. Okay. So the jalapeno is ready. I'm going to do maybe two cloves of garlic now. All right. So we'll mince the garlic at this point. Cut off that nasty bit. So I'm basically going to slice it super fine. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So now I keep forgetting about the scraping. I'll scrape with the back of my knife. All right, now this looks like a lot of garlic, I think. I don't know. The recipe called for a whole jalapeno and two cloves of garlic, actually three cloves of garlic, but I guess one of those was pretty big. So I think I'm just gonna eyeball it when we get the cheeses in there. Now for the chives. 
I just got these in the produce department. And these are just going to be for garnish. All right, I'm just going to dry these off a little bit here. Pull out any of the pieces that are looking a bit ripe, I guess. I think I'll cut the ends off a bit there. Okay, this uh, should be super fine too. They're so tiny, they don't need a whole lot of chopping because they're just fine by nature, I think. Okay, so we'll just leave those there. Okay. I need to do the cheese now. So, <clears throat> I'm just going to use this little piece and see if that's all we need. It says about a cup. I'm always afraid of cutting my skin on these graters. So I'm super cautious. And we'll just kind of press that cheese through there gently. Okay. I would say that is about a cup of cheese. And I always like to rinse this thing off because cheese once it's dry, it's super hard to get out of these things. So clean as you go, or it's going to be a bear to clean up. All right, now for the creamy part, cream cheese. And it called for a whole brick, a whole brick. I am using the one third less fat, the new Chatel, because I think it's easier to work with, it's softer. Plus you can save a little bit of calories. Oops. Okay, so there's that. We're gonna go ahead and add the garlic. I'll use the back of my knife. We'll put the garlic and the jalapeno in there. Okay, now the chives can wait for garnishing. We'll just set that aside there. And we're going to give it a mix. It's gonna get loud, but I'll speed this up so you don't have to listen to it. Okay. I know I saw some white bits flying about. Oh well, I forgot to salt and pepper. I'm not a big fan of salt, but you gotta have a little bit in there. So there's a little teeny bit and some pepper. I do like pepper. That's probably good. Okay. Spoonula. We'll kind of scrape all this together. 
so it'll be easier to scoop into those mushrooms. This is pretty. All right. I'm going to start cleaning these mushrooms now. That would be the bacon. Let's get it out. Still looks a bit juicy to me. And not in a good way. I'm going to flip the bacon and then I'll put it back in the oven so that they get super crispy. I just want to get these chives set aside. I like to clean as I go so that when I'm done cooking, there's very little mess and I can just enjoy myself with my snack. So we'll get all these chives on there, clean that whiteboard off or whatever that's called, cutting board, not a whiteboard. Okay, those will be for garnish. I guess we'll put it over there. So I am going to clean up this space and then we'll get to cleaning those mushrooms. Okay, now the mushrooms. Let's see here. I'm just gonna dampen the towel so that we can clean some of this dirt off of the mushrooms. And I'm going to put them on here. Usually I just put them straight on the pan, but you know how mushrooms have moisture in there? I'm thinking if I put them on here that maybe they'll be a little, I don't know, crispier or not as, um, I guess, slimy. So I'm just going to remove the stems. from about 20 of these, and then we'll clean them. Put that there. Oops, I broke one. And I will find a use for the stems and the broken mushrooms, maybe in a salad or something, I don't know. So two, four, six, eight, nine. I have a feeling that, oop, that one's broken. I'm probably gonna need both of these packages. I picked small mushrooms because I really hope that this is gonna be a one bite appetizer or a one bite snack. So I tried to purposely choose small mushrooms and I might even carve the centers a little bit more because these stems are tiny. So the holes are going to be tiny, but in order to get that, that one bite, I wanted them to be small. So we'll see how this goes. I don't know. Look how dirty my hands are. I mean, I know that that dirt is food grade, food grade dirt. Is there such a thing as that? I'm still going to clean it off though. And I've also heard that you don't want to run these under water because the mushrooms will soak up that water. 
So you want to use a damp cloth or a napkin. This is what I have heard anyway. I am not a formally trained cook by any means. Okay, I'm just going to wash my hands a little bit of that major dirt. Okay, here we go. We're going to clean these mushrooms now. Oh, I broke it again. Another broken one. Oh, I broke another one. Maybe that one will be all right. Goodness. Look how dirty. I'll speed this up. This is going to take a little while. Turn the cloth. Start on a new side. Oh, I broke another one. Shoot. All right. I need to be careful. We're running out of mushrooms. If I have leftover filling, I'll just pull the mushrooms out of the refrigerator and make some more. I could always send them to work with my husband and people will eat them at work, I guess, if I make too much. I definitely don't want to waste this filling here. It's really pretty with all that green in there. I think I'll turn it again. This will work. This is an eighth of a teaspoon. We'll just kind of scrape out. I don't know if that's called a membrane in there, you know, to make a nice cup. Look at that. So that one's ready. And here we go. gentle hands especially along that rim <gasps> oh I broke it again I'm gonna just stick it on there I keep breaking those rims all right this is the only way to learn is to make mistakes it's the best way Learn by your mistakes. <gasps> oh, shoot. I think I'll check the bacon. Oh my goodness. I think it's ready. The recipe says to leave it at 400. So I'm going to let those cool down just a little bit and then we'll chop that up and put it in this cream cheese. All right, I think I figured out the secret to carving these. You really want to cup the mushroom with your fingers like this so that you're putting pressure on the opposite side of the cup and that way you won't break the rim. That's the secret. 
now that I've almost broken, I don't know, a half a dozen mushrooms. I am going to check the bacon and see if I can touch it so I can chop it up. Let's see if this is gonna work. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. Okay, so I'm just gonna get my bacon and it said about six pieces of bacon. So because I have bacon lovers, I'm gonna do maybe 10. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's just do eight. All so right, I'm gonna here chop we go. this bacon up super fine and we'll just put it right in the um, cream cheese. Okay, I think this is pretty good. Crumbly bacon. Here we go. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now, we're gonna fill up these mushrooms. Maybe I'll spread them out just a little bit more. Straighten out this rack. This rack doesn't really fit super good in this uh, pan, but I am going to make the best of it. I thought about having my husband kind of bend the feet in a little bit so that at least they'll kind of tuck in, but I did not for this particular recipe because I wanted to get started and he was doing other stuff. Okay, here we go. We're gonna I'm fill going these to up use now. a teaspoon. And I'm gonna have to use my fingers here to get it out and in to the mushroom. Okay. So I'm just gonna fill these mushrooms to the top for now, because I do not know how far this filling is going to go. So we'll just fill each one like that. All right, here we go. Yeah, look at all this. I have a lot, a lot left of this stuffing. Those three packages, I think, um, definitely could probably fill that other package of mushrooms here with this filling. 
Make sure they're all upright as best as possible. Come on, get on there. Okay. I think that's pretty good. They'll cook in there, 400 degree oven, 25 minutes. And then we'll pull them out, let them cool, and then we'll garnish them with these chives. And then later, I'll make some more because I probably could fill at least another eight or so mushrooms. But I'll just do that later. So now we're just gonna wait for 25 minutes for those to be done and I think they're gonna be pretty good. I'm not sure if they're gonna be a one bite. They might be a two bite, but I think they'll be a finger food. There's no oil, so I don't think they're gonna be greasy. I will clean up this mess out of the oven and they look pretty good. They're not as pretty as I'd hoped and some of them kind of toppled over. So just um, kind of tuck some of the filling back in. I think part of my problem is this little tray or this, this um, cooling rack that I used is a bit too big for my pan and so it kind of toppled over a bit. I think if they had stayed flat, it would have been a much better result. So I'm just going to go ahead and plate these. Okay, so now we'll just put some of the chives on here. are falling everywhere but on the mushrooms. They just don't want to stay on those mushrooms. But even if the chives are on the plate, it's still pretty. Just a little pop of color in that brown and orange from the cheese and the mushroom. Mm, I like the smell of these chives. It smells really fresh and mmm. And of course, there's probably some of that bacon smell. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Can you see that? Definitely, you need a garnish because without a garnish, they're not very attractive. With a garnish though, I think they're quite pretty. So let's taste one that kind of fell apart. We'll take this one because this one doesn't have all the yummy, crusty topping. It's still got the filling in it, but some of these are going to have a really nice little, I guess, crust. This one kind of lost it. Mm, it smells really good and I think the chive is going to be a really nice additional flavor against the um, cream cheese and the jalapeno and the bacon. Yummy. Let's go in for a bite. One bite. I'm going to try go to do one bite. Let's see what happens. Mm. It's not greasy. And it's very mild. I can't even taste the jalapeno. I do taste the bacon and the mushroom. Every flavor is in there. I think I might have to have another one. I can taste the bacon. I'm just going to have another little one. We'll just make it look like I haven't eaten any of them. Okay. Oops, I lost a chive. 
I want the chive on top of there. Oh, here's another bite. And this is definitely a one bite snack. Mm. It's very good, but you know what? I can't taste the jalapeno at all. I think what I might do next time is add some of that Tony Chachery's spice to the cream cheese mixture, just to kind of kick it up a notch. Cause I just don't really taste the jalapeno at all. I definitely taste the bacon. It's got a little bit of a salty taste and then the creaminess of the cream cheese. And of course the cheddar is a nice little addition. I mean, that was Colby Jack, so that kind of cheesy flavor. But I think this is a really great recipe. I think I definitely would add either chili powder, some additional garlic, or Tony Chachery's, just to make it a little more spicy. If you don't want spicy, and you just want it to be mild and savory, instead of jalapeno, add some herbs de Provence or something like that, or herbs fine, if I pronounce those right, I don't know, but either one of those would make a really nice savory option. I think this is a keeper. It's definitely a good one bite snack, which is what I'm on my journey for, one bite snacks for Mahjong. We found one. Between now and the next episode of Mahjong Nash and Such, may all your picks be keepers.